Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome again to another live streaming of task training. And uh, before I uh, post through with our discussions today, uh, continuation po ito ng um, how to claim for battery funds, no? Na sa mga annexes po tayo. And uh, I would like to say thank you po sa mga subscribers natin dito sa uh, tax training, no? Uh, na, uh, umabot na po tayo ng 9,850, no? 150 more to go before we reach the uh, 10,000 subscribers na kailangan i-celebrate at kailangan na, oh, we have to say thank you to YouTube kasi because of this opportunity, no? Nabigyan tayo ng opportunity. And, um, thank you also to YouTube. Nag-umpisa na kami na naka- Nakatanggap na kami ng first namin na <laughs> salary sa YouTube. So, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we promise to bring you more tax updates, no? Kaya nga, kung mapapansin ninyo, ang mga ginagawa natin ngayon, nag update tayo, at saka kung ano yung mga bago talaga, uh, sinasabayan natin para naman makakarating sa inyo timely. Paano na pala yung alpha list na data entry, Harry? Okay. So, ma-upload na po mamaya yung version 7 po ng uh, alpha list na data entry kasi yun na po yung gagamitin ng mga magpa-file ng 2020 na compliance sa database po ng BAR, yun na po yung gagamitin version 7. Ano yung pagkakaiba ng version 7, Harry, at saka yung version 6? Uh, sa version 6.1 po kasi, yung gamit pa dun na form is uh, yung luma pa na 16 o for CF. Ah, uh, okay. Kasi sa bago po, uh, pinagiwalay na siya 16 o for C, saka meron na rin 16 o for F. Okay. Tapos may mga nagdag din na bagong form, katulad ng 1621 uh, uh, para sa advice. Okay. So, yun po yung update natin, yung sa alpha list data entry. From version 6, meron na tayong version 7 ngayon. No? Okay. Shout out. Uh, meron na po na. Oh, sige. Shout out ka muna. Good evening daw po, ma'am, sabi ni Ma'am Lilian Yao. Okay. Always talaga si Ma'am Lilian. No? Good evening, Ma'am Lilian. Thank you for watching. Good evening din daw po ang sabi ni Sir MJ Logar. Okay, so shout out Sir MJ Logar. Sir ba yan o baka ma'am yan ha? MJ. Oo, oh, MJ pwede mo ba yan no? So shout out po sa iyo, MJ Logar. Uh, Ito pala po yung nagko-comment ma'am. Pero may viewers na po na eight viewers. Okay, so uh, our uh, live streaming today is continue po tayo sa question and answers ko ano po yung mga question ninyo, sasagutin po natin. And then continue din po tayo sa discussions natin on how to claim for your bat, uh, refund. no Because napaka-importante po at saka highly technical po yung value-added tax. So sometimes, alam, uh, pag hindi natin alam na may claim tayo and two years lang pala yun, napapabayaan natin. So uh, instead na uh, meron tayong benefits, napuporgan natin yung uh, benefits na hindi natin na-enjoy, no? Kaya, ito po yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon. At saka, ito yung latest po na uh, updates about the refund po ng uh, value-added tax, no? Napakahaba po nitong uh, claim na to kasi Sa totoo lang, mahirap din po talaga ang uh, VAT, no? So, Revenue Memorandum Order number 47-2020, no? So, napakaba niya. So, anyway, naumpisa natin ito nung nakaraan, no? Um, so, uh, tuloy po natin ngayon, no? So, nasa Annex, uh, di na po tayo dito sa Verification Procedures for Sales of Services, no? Kasi, di ba ngayon may mga serrated sales na rin tayo. Kaya yung benta natin na serrated sales, 
wala yang output, wala babayar na bat, pero pwede tayong mag-claim ng input sa mga purchases po na binili natin pertaining to that uh, zero-rated sale for services. So, anong gagawin po dito na sa verification procedures? The assigned revenue officer shall compare its category and amount of sales in the quarterly VAT returns. So, remember, ha, uh, sa, sa pag-audit, magre-rely na ang examiner doon sa quarterly returns. Titingnan na lang niya yung monthly pag may problema. No? At saka to verify doon the monthly sales. Okay. So, audited financial statements and general ledger with the classific classification and amount declared in the application for what credit or refund. No? So, pa paano yung pag-audit? I-reconcile mo yung what returns with the financial statements at saka yung general ledger. Bakit general ledger? Kasi total na yun. Yun na yung uh, pinaka-ending balance ng mga accounts. No? So, identify and reconcile discrepancies noted to determine taxable and exempt transactions which will be subject to output tax or allocation of input tax. Okay. So, kasi, kasi ang pinag-usapan natin dito, what, what refund? So, ang inu-audit dito is what? No? So, since dalawang account ang involved dito, the output at saka the input. Pero yung output at saka input na yan, saan yan ang gagaling? Sa sales at saka sa purchases. Uh, next is determine whether sales declared as zero rated actually emanate from export sales and other transactions that may qualify as zero rated or effectively zero rated sales by verifying service contracts and or other related documents. Ano po yung sabi natin para maging qualified siya na uh, zero rated or um, uh, may mga requirements po especially kung uh, zero rated sales of services yan and export mo yung services mo dapat ano siya binayad siya sa um, foreign currency denominated sales at saka uh, under the rules and regulations of the central bank no? and then next verify from the financial statements no? uh, what returns and books of accounts were necessary if there are local sales of services and exempt transactions which should not be subject to zero rate okay so, very important na zero-rated sales ang dinidetermine dito kasi zero-rated naman talaga ang uh, walang output pero may input. Next is check the correctness of the submitted schedule of zero-rated sales of services. Uh, mayroon siyang Annex A 1.3 and completeness of the supporting documents through the following procedures. So, paano po niya ginagawa? Ang kagandahan ng nakikita ko ng mga ginagawa ng BIR ngayon, all, even though yung ating mga batas, at saka sa international din natin ang mga laws, no, mga, more na sila sa procedural. No? Kasi dati, very general lang yung law, padating sa procedure, hirap na. Ngayon, very specific na yung procedure, kaya madali na lang implement or administer yung law. No? So, letter A, Examine official receipts and or other proofs of exportation of services. No? So, anong titignan official receipts? Hindi sinabi sales invoice. Ha? Kasi ang sales invoice para yan sa goods. No? Uh, check the accuracy of the details in the schedule against the official receipts and proofs of inward remittances of foreign currency representing proceeds from zero-rated sales of services. Letter C, ascertain the proceeds were paid for in acceptable foreign currency and accounted for in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP by verifying the supporting bank credit memo, bank certification, taxpayer's passbook or any document issued by the bank to prove the inward remittance of foreign currency from the zero-rated sales. Okay. So, ito na yung sinasabi ko na kailangan dadaan siya sa banko, Banko Central ng Pilipinas Rules and Regulations, at saka uh, babayaran siya ng foreign currency. No? Uh, next is, in case of constructive remittance such as offsetting arrangement, secure a copy of any of the following. Board resolution as to offsetting arrangement. Enter company debit or credit memo on the amount of constructive remittance under the offsetting arrangement. 
and then loan documents or proof when their company advances. No? Uh, kaya ito dito na naman papasok dito yung um, related party transactions. Ito sinasabi niya na intercompany advances. Loan, no? Intercompany loans. If the amount of the inward remittance, whether actual or constructive, is less than the total declared zero-rated sales, the discrepancy shall be construed as unremitted export sales. No? Kaya nga, ingat-ingat sa... Uh, kaya yun yung mga susunod po natin na tutukan lang natin yung income tax because magpa-file tayo hanggang April. But after that, tutukan po natin yung... Uh, kasi itong ating tax training is about tax compliance. No? So anong tutukan natin dito? Paano kayo makapag-comply with your tax obligations? Na hindi kayo mahirapan pagdating na po ng tax audit. No? So, anong gagawin natin? Isa-isahin natin, we will be, uh, go through with a very, very specific uh, procedure kung paano natin i-reconcile itong ating mga VAT returns at saka dun sa ating mga records, sa ating mga source documents, so that, yun po yung i-video namin, so that yung mga uh, staff or yung mga personnel ng companies na in charge for the tax compliance talagang magagawa na nila yung uh, reconciliations, yung dapat na mga reconciliations, bago pa man sila maudit ng BAR. No? Okay. If the amount of the inward remittance, whether actual or constructive, is less than the total declared, zero-rated sales, ha? less than siya, ha? the discrepancy shall be construed an, as unremitted export sales. So, findings naman to. Hence, the input tax pertaining to the discrepancy shall be deducted from the allowable input tax using the following formula. So, ito yung computation. For companies with purely zero-rated sales of services, unremitted export sales over total zero-rated sales multiplied by the allowable input equals input tax allocable to unremitted export sales. So, yung halimbawa, yung refund mo na kiniklaim is 3 million because meron kang unremitted na export sales, may findings, hindi magtali yung total mo, may kul kulang. No? So, anong gagawin? Ibabawas doon yung input tax pertaining to that unremitted sales. No? I-allocate nila yan. Ito yung formula. Unremitted export sales over total uh, zero-rated sales multiplied by the allowable input tax. Kung magkano man yun, ibabawas yan doon sa kiniklaim mo na input tax or VAT refund. No? For companies with zero-rated and taxable transactions, ito naman yung formula. Unremitted export sales over total sales multiplied by the allowable input tax equals the input tax allocable to unremitted export sales. No? So, input tax allocable to unremitted export sales. So, ibig sabihin, babawasan na naman yung claim of for input. No? Computation of allowable input tax, the total input tax claim, less this allowed input tax per verification equals allowable input tax. No? So, binawasan ka kasi may findings. Binawasan yung, halimbawa, yung claim mo is 3 million since mayroong findings worth 1 million na halimbawa, 2 million na lang yung mag-grant sa'yo. No? Okay. So, there is an illustration is provided for in Annex C.3. So, for indirect export sales or zero-rated sales other than those emanating from direct exports, verify from audit information, tax exemption, and incentives division, ito yung AIT. Ed. The endorsement of investment promotion agency or IPA on the exemptions incentives granted during the period covered by the claim to the registered business enterprise. RBA, claiming such incentive in cases where the records of AIT do not show that the respective IPA has endorsed the RBA, verify from the IPA whether such RBA is qualified for certain tax incentive. Pag nag-claim ka naman ng incentive, i-verify yan kung um, qualified ka ba talaga doon sa incentive na yan. Particularly about zero rating. In cases where the authenticity of the document can be verified electronically or online through quick response or QR codes attached to the docket, a printout of the screenshot of the result of the verification from the facility hosting the electronic online system 
with the duly signed notation that the same was verified through the said system. Number eight, determine compliance with invoicing requirement by A, verifying the authority to print ATP of the receipts invoices or a approved permit to use computerized accounting system issued by the office where the taxpayer is registered. Letter B, checking the issuance of official receipts in accordance with Section 113B of the Task Code as amended and RMO number 12-2013 and or existing issuances. No? So, itong issuance ng official receipts, kasi services yung pinag-usapan dito under Section 113. So, it, ito yung um, tama o tamang proseso sa pag-issue po ng resibo ng uh, VAT registered taxpayer. No? Pinakita ko na sa inyo yung sample nung nakaraan, no? Kung nasaan doon yung batable sales, the exempt sales, and the decelerated sales. Next is ascertaining the issuance of official receipts for batable sales, accelerated sales, and exempt sales by taxpayers with mixed transactions, no? In compliance with the invoicing requirements under Section 113 of the Tax Code of 1997 as amended, lalo na sa mixed transactions, no? Kasi pag mixed transactions na yan, meron kang taxable sales, meron kang exempt sales, not purely a zero rated sales. Next is ensure that all issued official receipts are accounted for. No? So lahat ng uh, issued na official receipts dapat nakareport sa um, nakasama dun sa total sales. No? Including those issued by branches. No? So yung mga na, uh, na issue na branches. Bakit? Saan ba nire-report yung mga uh, sales ng branches? Sinasama po yun. Kaya nga aggregate total ang head office kasama na po yung sales ng branches. Note any break in the sequence of the serial number of official receipts issued and ask the taxpayer to account for the missing numbers. In case of cancellation, look for the original copy and indicate on the working papers the cancelled numbers as well as those which are unaccounted. Determine if the unaccounted receipts pertain to local sales of service, which should be subject to output tax. No? And then, a certain any violation of invoicing requirements that should be imposed, the compromise penalty under RMO number 7-2015 and or existing issuances. Ano to 7-2015? Ito po yung mga, mga penalties. No? Uh, determine any deemed sales as defined in Section 106B of the Tax Code as amended and deduct a corresponding output tax from the claim were applicable. Ano itong mga deemed sales? Halimbawa, may mga withdrawals ng inventory no, for personal use. Consider deemed sales yan, may output yan. Pero um, pagdating na sa uh, halimbawa, hindi mo siya kinonsider na what a, na sales, no? Pero na, man nakita na meron din sales transactions that is considered as batable sales. Kaya maapektuhan yung total mo na kiniklaim mo na refund. Why? Kasi may output tax yun eh, no? Pero hindi mo siya na-consider. Uh, check if transactions with statement of account, collection or acknowledgement receipts and debit notes have corresponding issued official receipts and recorded as sales, no? So, palagi ko itong reminder po sa inyo na once you have the acknowledgement receipt, delivery receipts, yung mga um, debit notes, no? Dapat yan, that is not a proof of sale. Anong proof of sale yan? Since we're talking of services, the proof of sales of services is only official receipt. So, dapat lahat ng inisyo mo na acknowledgement receipt, debit notes, kung ano man yung secondary invoices mo, dapat may corresponding official receipts po yan. No? Any supplementary documents such as this without official receipts should be verified if they are uh, sales subject to output tax which has to be deducted from the claim. No? And then determine that if the taxpayer is also engaged in the sale of goods which should have issued sales invoices and based on the taxable sales of goods, compute the corresponding output tax that should be deducted from the claim. No? Okay, so yun yung procedure kung anong gagawin ng examiner to verify. Okay. 
Ito naman, verification of purchases and info tax, no? So, uh, bakit uh, purchases and info tax? Magkasama yan. Bakit? Kasi yung purchases, yun yung binili mo na uh, mga uh, goods or services na ikiklaim mo ngayon as input. Ito yung kiniklaim mo. Kaya magka-partner ang purchases at saka input. At ito yung kiniklaim mo for refund, no? Or tax credit certificate. May shoutout ulit? May question na? Wala pa po question lang, pero may shoutout po. Okay. Good evening daw po ang sabi ni Ma'am Mary Jane Onal. Okay, so shoutout Ma'am Mary Jane Onal and uh, uh, thank you for watching. Good evening din daw po ang sabi ni Ma'am Sandra Eborda. Oh, Muluwisian sila, no? Shoutout to you Ma'am Sandra Eborda and uh, thank you for watching. Sila ka lang Ma'am. Okay. So, pero ilan na yung ating viewers? Okay. So, alam mo na, excited na kami kasi uh, malapit, kunting-kunti na lang, no? Malapit na tayo sa 10,000 subscribers. Kaya nga, nagpa-plano uh, na kami on, on how to celebrate, no? Uh, kaso lang, walang pasok ng Saturday, Sunday. Kaya kung papasok yan hari ng Saturday, Sunday, Monday na tayo mag-celebrate niyan. Okay. So, although pinagbaandaan po namin and we want to say thank you sa YouTube for the opportunity. Okay. So, verification of purchases and the input tax. The assigned revenue official shall compare the nature and amount of purchases per VAT returns, financial statements, and general ledger with those reflected in the application for VAT refund. No? Determine any discrepancy and request for reconciliation of the discrepancy, no? Alam nyo, sa audit, ang hinahanap mo dyan yung, hindi naman na sinasabi natin na mali, no? Pero sin, ang hinahanap mo dyan talaga mali, eh, no? Kasi pagka uh, tama, nag-reconcile ka lahat, wala kang findings, then okay. Pero ano yung maging findings mo pag nag-audit? Kapag hindi na nagtugma yung mga records, no? At saka yung claims. Number two, check the correctness and completeness of the submitted schedule of purchases, no? Annex A.1.6, through the following procedures. No? So, verify the accuracy of the details in the schedule against the suppliers, sellers, sales invoices, official receipts, deed of sale, and other documents in support of the purchase of goods, properties, and services. And check the correctness of the input tax shown separately on the invoice receipt and match with the amount per schedule, no? So, ano yun? Mag magkano yung nasa schedule? Ilagay, tingnan mo doon ngayon ang total niyan sa resibo o total mo yung resibo, tama ba siya doon sa schedule? No? Next is asserting the input tax credit is not recognized from the following. Letter A, purchases from non-VAT and or exempt persons. Bakit? Kasi yung purchases mo coming from the non-VAT or the exempt persons, una-una, uh, wala yung input, no? So, wala yung input. Hindi po yan pwedeng i-claim na uh, input tax. Kaya, pag, pag doon nang galing, nag-claim ka ng input doon, but registered ka, pero yung resibo na binilhan mo is none but, disallow yung claim mo for input, no? And then, effectively serrated purchases, no? Hindi rin pwede yung effectively serrated purchases. Purchases from what persons which are personal in nature or not made in the course of trade or business. Alam nyo, yun ang pinagtatalunan namin nung bago pa lang yung VAT. No? Under Executive Order 273 noong 1988, nung, uh, yung director namin noon sa Bakulod, si Commissioner Rowalo pa. No? Ang pinagtatalunan namin is that yung uh, purchases mo na personal in nature, kasi yung iba pinipilit na talagang Lahat. Sinabi kasi lahat ng purchases pwede mong i-claim. Siyempre, lahat ng purchases ng business. Talagang common sense naman yan na ang personal mo, hindi yan kasama sa business. Ganon din sa VAT. E bumili ka ng mga personal mo na mga... Alam nyo, during the time nag-audit na ako, sa pag-claim ng input tax, may mga resibo doon. Ang laman ng resibo, mga damit, no? mga grocery, Mga personal na gamit ng tao, paano mo i-allow yan? No, sa bawal po yan. Only purchases related to business 
you can claim that as an input tax. Kasi, yun ang mga legitimate na expenses. Yung personal mo, hindi mo yan dapat na sinasama. No? Uh, letter D, purchases of tax exempt goods, properties, or services from what registered person, although covered by what invoices or receipts. No? Si tax exempt goods yan eh. Ano ba yung mga tax exempt goods? No, alam mo yun na ano ako, na parang lalo akong nagkaroon ng uh, inspiration na continue to do the video. Kasi ang iba kong kasabayan po, sa totoo lang, yung isang ibang kasabayan ko na nag-YouTube about tax, hindi na sila tumutuloy, no? Kasi sabi nila, wala naman nanonood, wala naman ano. So, parang na... Um, Uh, karoon pa ako ng idea na magkaroon pa ng mga videos, continue with the videos, bakit? Pero mo may mga tanong na very elementary na ano ba yung mga bat exempt na uh, activities, bat exempt na goods? So para sa akin, sabi ko kasi ang, ang nasa mind ko talaga in my own perspective, napaka dalilan yan, napaka ano. Pero there are people pala out there na hindi din pa rin nila alam. Para sa sa isang uh, accountant, parang napaka-basic yan. Pero sa iba pala napakahirap, no? Kaya sabi ko, kahit na ba sa palagay ko, basic na basic, kailan pa rin namin i-video, kailan pa rin magkaroon ng uh, mga uploads para napapanood. Kasi, ang dami pa rin pala na kahit sabihin natin, napaka-simple na lang, pero uh, hindi alam, no? So, parang nabuhayan na naman ako na ito pala, kailangan. No, so, kaya nga meron na kami diyan na mga videos na zero rated sale of goods, no? Although hindi pa na-upload yung zero rated sale of services, no? Kasama na 'yan. Okay, so uh, Number four determine compliance with the substantiation requirements for claim of input tax credit, no? Ano yung substantiation requirements since uh, ano to? Ito, hindi na to um, for, ano lang ha, sale of uh, services. Kasama na dito yung sale of goods and services. No? So, um, ano yung mga requirements for uh, substantiation ng input tax uh, credit? For domestic purchases of goods, properties, and services in the course of trade or business, there, there must be, this must be supported by what invoices and or official receipts, no? Showing the information required in Section 113B and 237 of the tax code as amended. Ano yung mga information nandun? Nakalagay yung um, trade name ng uh, taxpayer or ng company, and then the address, and then the VAT registration number, and then nakalagay dyan yung name ng uh, customer, no? and then the address the tax identification number, the, the term, and then nakalagay yung description ng binenta, yun, no, nung uh, quantity, the unit price, the um, description ng merchandise or ng item o ng uh, services, and then nakalagay yung amount, no? Nakalagay yung amount na uh, gross, and then nakalagay yung amount for VAT, and then the amount net of VAT, and then nakalagay kung serrated sales ba siya, exempt sales or taxable sales, no? And then may perma kung sino yung nag-issue. And then ano pa yung nakalagay doon sa baba? Yung uh, information about the authority to print. Nakalagay yung ilang booklets ba, kailan, ay yung, yung number ng permit, and then uh, yung booklet number, the serial number, No, then nakalagay na this uh, receipt is valid only for five years. No? So, makikita mo doon sa date of issue once. Okay. Akin na nga yung resibo, hari. Ando, no? Okay. Ayan, no? Ayan, ipakita mo doon sa kanila. I lapit mo doon. No? So, So, yun, yun po yung uh, resibo. Ayan. Ano yun mo dyan? Yan po yung resibo, no? So, yun yung sinasabi ko na uh, 
nakalagay diyan yung name, turo mo yung name. Yan, yung name diyan, no? Then the address, the TIN number, no? And then yung mga description ko ano yung mga merchandise. Tapos sa baba yun yung information doon sa printer, no? Yung sa baba, no? And then yung nakalagay na valid only for five years. Ayun, nakapakalaki niya na kasi uh, kailan niya nag-umpisa na valid for five years? From the date of the uh, permit or from the date na na-issue siya. So, makikita mo na talaga kung expired siya o hindi. No? Makompute mo na dyan mismo. Okay. Sige. So, yan po yung uh, requirement. And then, a cash register machine tape naman shall constitute valid proof of input tax credit only if it shows the information required under the aforementioned issuances as implemented in Section 4.110.8. 4 of RR number 16 das 2005 and section 2 of RR number 16 das 2018. Alika Ari, pakita mo yung uh, ayun no, yung uh, cast register machine tape. Mm -hmm. Yan. Yan. Yan po yung sample natin ng cast register machine tape. Ano yun naman? Okay. Ano naman yung nakalagay diyan? Yan yung uh, nasa taas, yung pangalan ng nag-issue. Turo mo yung sa taas. Yung pangalan ng issue yung TID niya, no? Tapos yung mga merchandise, kung ano yung laman, ano yung mga pinamili mo dyan. Naka-itemize yan, kaya makikita mo talaga kung mga personal yan, no? Hindi related sa business. And then, nakalagay din dyan kung uh, sino yung... Uh, Supplier, nakalagay din yung mga machine identification number, and then nakalagay dyan yung um, um, official receipt or the transaction number. No? So, that is also valid po. Kaya yung ating mga cash register machine uh, tape, hindi po yan fake basta may permit. Yung magiging fake po dyan kung wala siyang kaukulang permit. No? Okay. Uh, next is the input tax on purchases of real property should be supported by a copy of the public instrument. Deed of absolute sale, deed of conditional sale, uh, contract or agreement to sell together with a VAT invoice and or official receipts issued by the seller as implemented in Section 4.110-883 of RR 16-2005 as amended. Alam nyo yung 16-2005, ito pa yung... Um, uh, implementing ng regulations ng VAT no noong 2005 at ano yung mga input tax on purchase of real property itong purchase ng real property related to business din to no hindi siya yung personal mo na uh, bumili ka so kung halimbawa yung uh, bumili ka ng property no pinangalan mo sa corporation and then yung corporation is VAT registered uh, corporation so, ano yan? Uh, pag binili mo yan, mag-i-issue yung uh, binilhan mo ng resibo, pwede mo siya i-claim na input tax. No? Bawalan ng building yan. But, ito naman yung magiging um, um, uh, mangyayari or consequent nung bumili ka ng lupa. Sa pangalan ng corporation na but registered. Yes, pwede mo maklaim yung input tax on the purchase of that uh, real property. Pero, pagka dinispose mo naman yung property na yun, magbabayad ka rin ng output tax. No? So, alimbawa, binili mo ng 1 million, binenta mo na siya ng 3 million, may 2 million ka talaga na uh, value added. No? So, subject po yan sa um, value added tax na 12%. Next is the claims for refund or unutilized input tax on importation shall be supported with a VAT payment certification from the Bureau of Customs, BOC, Revenue Accounting Division, or the RAD, including the photocopies of import entry and internal revenue declarations and or single administrative document statement of settlement duties and taxes. No? Ito yung galing sa BOC. SSDT. No? So, validate the VAT payment certification issued by the Revenue Accounting Division of the BOC 
with a scanned copy of the said certification from the said office sent to the dedica uh, dedicated email address of the processing office of the BAR. Dedicated email address, ibig sabihin, hindi basta-basta yung nakakita ka lang ng email address ng BAR, padala ka na ng padala doon. So, ibig sabihin, dedicated email address for this purpose lang. no So, uh, try to um, uh, choose also the email na para po dito sa uh, purpose na to, no? Hindi yung, kasi ang, ang mabiyayar, ang daming email address po niyan, ha? So, only for this purpose. Uh, next is verify actual existence of goods or properties that generate input tax credits whenever practicable and ascertain whether the same are actually used in the course of business, no? So, actual existence of goods or properties. So, nandyan ba talaga yung goods or properties? No? And then, next is verify the authenticity and validity of the input taxes claimed by the taxpayer in his or its VAT returns. No? Per, R, per RMO number 16-2007 and 22-2007 and RMC number 29-2009. It is not only enough that the taxpayer is able to present upon audit the corresponding sales invoice official receipts to evidence these purchases declared, but there is a further need to ascertain the legitimacy and factual existence of big ticket items of purchases and validate whether there, this had been have been appropriately recorded the books of accounts and reflected in the filed tax returns of both the taxpayer claimant and the seller or supplier of goods and services. No? Actually, ang dami niya sinasabi dito na mga revenue memorandum circular, RMO, that is for um, bad purposes, no? Uh, Harry, meron tayong parang hanggang 2017 yun na uh, nakasiparate siya na mga RMOs, RMCs ng bat lang lahat. So, i-update na lang natin yun, lahat ng RMC, RMOs ng 2018- Hanggang 2021 na idagdag natin doon. Kasi ang dami nag-o-order, no? Uh, ang gagawin namin dyan, um, i-consolidate mo lahat ng mga RMOs, lahat ng mga regulations na tungkol sa VAT. Meron na rin kami ginawa na tungkol lahat sa withholding. Meron din kami nagawa na tungkol lahat sa income, no? So, hindi na lang na-update, no? Kasi yung umpisa na na kumuha ko ng law at saka nag-bar exam ako noong 2018. Kaya nga, ang nangyari, hanggang 2017 lang po yung nagawa namin. But this time, i-continue natin yan dahil napakalaking napakalaking bagay. Why? Kasi kung pupunta ka sa website ng BR, nandun lahat ng RMO, sasakit yung ulo mo sa kahahanap ng gusto mong makita. Pero kung nakakumpile na siya lahat, at saka hari, as, as services natin doon sa mga members, Yung mga compiled natin na mga reading materials sa lahat ng uh, yung mga sinasabi ko na about income tax lahat, no? Naka-arrange na siya by topic. We will make it available to our members, no? So may members po tayo na uh, yung mga inaalagaan natin sa saan ba yun? Sa PSTR ay yun? No? Yun sa Philippine School of Taxation po natin, meron tayong mga members doon na they are paying 1,000 per year. Lahat niyo na, kailangan na silang mag-renew, ha? January na. Pare, ah, ano natin, ilan na ba yung members doon? O, oh, so, uh, tigwa 1,000 yun. So, papadala natin yun. Kasi we, we, are, we are improving po our facilities for the members. Na, kasi dati, dito kami, eh, meron kaming national, uh, international tax library, eh, no? Eh, because na good size nga tayo, lipat na natin yung sa Montalban, hindi pa siya masyano na-arrange. Pero gawin na lang natin na soft copy because that's the demand of the time. No? Na online, online na. Hindi na pwedeng pumunta ka sa isang lugar for social distancing. So, ang gagawin natin dyan, yung online na mga available na materials na yan para updated po, ilalagay natin hari doon para available po sa kanila. Ha? Ayan ang panggawa natin din. Nandiyan naman si Mia. Okay? Kasi napaka-technical po ng VAT. Oh, I tell you. Mas, mas uh, 
iba nga sa ibang bansa, ang tawag nila sa bat is very angry taxpayer. Bakit? Na angry na yung taxpayer sa sobra, uh, sobrang technicalities na ma-encounter niya sa bat. No? Pero, yun nga, sabi natin, the purpose of our task training is for you to have a better tax compliance. So, ilan lang ba yung mga taxes natin, especially national taxes? Yun ang tinututukan natin dito sa tax training. So, we have income tax, we have value-added tax. Income tax is tax on income. Value-added tax is a business tax. So, isang income mo, subject yan sa BAT, subject sa income tax. No? Or, kung hindi siya subject sa BAT, Another uh, kind of uh, business tax is percentage tax. So, hindi siya ka subject sa but subject siya sa uh, percentage tax or exempt siya both on percentage and uh, but, no? May mga uh, ganong sitwasyon na yung uh, income mo, hindi siya subject sa but, hindi rin subject sa percentage tax, no? Ano yun? Yung agricultural products, kagaya ng rice, no? sa hindi in siya subject sa percentage tax hindi rin subject sa VAT okay so for this purpose big ticket items so purchases and refer to local purchases made from suppliers whose individual gross cum cumulative sales to the particular taxpayers purchaser accounts to more than 5% of said taxpayer purchaser annual or quarterly gross purchases whichever is applicable Covering the period under audit. No? Number eight, check the authenticity and correctness of substantial claim and big ticket items of input tax credits by letter A, requesting for summary of purchases from the national office. Ano yung summary of uh, purchases from the national office? Ito yung VAT relief. Ano yun? VAT uh, reconciliation of listing for enforcement. That is uh, warehousing, data warehousing po yan ng BAR, no? Nando doon naka-bodega yung mga information po ng BAR, no? So, soft copy yan. Asserting that the purchases made by the taxpayer for which input taxes have been claimed were likewise appropriately reported as sales by his or its respective suppliers in their corresponding VAT returns, income tax returns, and in the summary list, of sales submitted to the BAR following the procedures in RMO number 16-2007. No? So, ito, itong mga sinasabi dito, Hari, ilagay natin yan sa isang, uh, ano bang tawag dyan, yung minagawa natin? Ring bind. Oh, ring bind, no? Hindi pa tayo naka-update ng ring bind natin. Dapat yung ring bind talaga na iba na spiral. In the absence of the summary of purchases in the National Office performed the following procedures. Access the BAR's information system to determine whether the suppliers are duly registered as VAT taxpayers. If it is found out that the suppliers are not registered or registered as non-VAT taxpayers only but issuing VAT invoices, yan, no? So, tinitingnan na. Then, pertinent information relative to the supplier and sales made to the taxpayer claimant must be endorsed to the concerned investigating office having jurisdiction over the taxpayer claimant for appropriate action. No? Uh, kasi non-BAT, ginawang BAT, and then nag-claim ng input tax. No? Kaya hari, mag-update na tayo dyan sa mga uh, non-BAT na BAT. No? This allowance of the input tax is attributable to the sales made by this questionable supplier shall only be done if, aside from the sales invoice, no other evidence can be presented by the taxpayer claimant to substantiate the authenticity of other purchases made. Okay. Obtain proof or evidence to substantiate the authenticity of the purchases, such as copies of delivery receipts of the suppliers, check vouchers, paid checks issued by the taxpayer claimant with big tickets purchases. Determining the allowable input tax on purchases of capital goods. Ano itong mga capital goods? Ito yung hindi siya part ng inventory. No? Hindi siya binibenta. No? So, the aggregate acquisition cost. Ito na yung sinasabi ko na sa inyo na mahigpit po yung audit sa VAT. No? Okay. The aggregate acquisition cost of depreciable assets in any calendar month refer to the total price excluding the VAT. No? Agreed upon for one or more assets acquired and 
not on the payments actually made during the calendar month. Thus, an asset acquired in installment for an acquisition's cost of more than 1 million, excluding the VAT, will be subject to the amortization of input tax despite the fact that the monthly payments or installments may not exceed 1 million. Kaya ang isang magiging project natin dito, Hari, sa VAT, is magkaroon talaga tayo ng workshop, no? So, yung mga invite natin dito siguro yung mga uh, internal accountants o yung mga bookkeepers, papaano talaga i-comply itong mga napaka-technical na VAT requirements, no? Kasi, ang ginagawa natin dito, sumasabay din po tayo sa BAR, no? Kung ano yung nagiging project ng BAR, uh, kinakaskade natin doon sa nang nagko-comply. Kasi, bakit? Para magtugma sila. Kasi ito yung, uh, yung requirement ng isa, ito naman dapat yung kinukomply ng isa. E eh, kung ito yung nirequire ng isa, hindi alam i-comply ng isa. So, nasaan? Puro penalties. No? Kawawa naman. So, anong gagawin natin para mag-meet yung dalawa? Kakaroon talaga tayo ng workshops in order na uh, nakakapag-comply tayo po sa very technical requirements ng back. No? Gawin na lang din po natin na online. No? So, were the aggregate acquisition cost exclusive of VAT of the depreciable capital goods in a calendar month exceeds 1 million pesos regardless of the acquisition cost of its capital asset purchased or imported, the input taxes shall be claimed as credit against output tax in the following manner. If the estimated useful life of a capital asset is 5 years or more, the input tax shall be spread evenly over a period of 60 months and the claim for input tax credit will commence in the calendar month when the capital asset is acquired. No? Ito po yung sa, sa old na law pa to. Pero pagdating sa train law, itong 2023 pa naman, hindi pa ngayon. No? Itong 5 years, magiging outright na to. No? And then, sa train law, Depende na sa depreciable life of the assets. So, halimbawa, yung uh, capital goods mo is uh, 3 years lang yung depreciable life. So, i-depreciate mo na lang din siya ng 3 years, hindi na po 5 years. No? If the estimated useful life of a capital asset is less than 5 years, so ito na yon. The input tax shall be spread evenly on a monthly basis by dividing the input tax by the actual number of months comprising the estimated useful life of the capital asset. So, hindi na 60 months. The claim for input tax credit shall commence in the calendar month that the capital assets goods were acquired. No? For the amortized portion of the input VAT on aggregate purchases of capital goods exceeding 1 million pesos, in a month pursuant to Section 110A to B of the task code as amended, the following rules shall apply. No? So for current claims, the corresponding sales invoices and or official receipts, including proofs of payment if qualified as big ticket for chase, shall be required to be submitted and verified. No? Okay. For the amortized deferred input tax which originated from purchases prior to the period of claim, acceptability of supporting documents is clarif clarified as follows. No? So, if the source documents of the capital goods were submitted and verified during the time they were claimed, there is no need to resubmit the same source documents. Instead, the schedule of amortization of deferred input VAT in the approved report will be the basis in determining the amortized portion in the subsequent claims. The copy of the schedule should be authenticated by the head of the processing office by marking certified true copy from the original on its and every page thereon to clearly show that the purchases have been duly verified in the previous VAT refund claims. In this regard, the processing office shall maintain a file for every claimant with amortized input VAT on purchases of capital goods exceeding 1 million in a month, the, the processing official uh, compare, reconcile the current amount claim vis-a-vis -vis the amount indicated in the schedules. No? So, tinitingnan na po sa source documents. For claims coming from the amortized portion of the deferred input VAT 
on importation of capital goods with previous certifications from BOC, such certification should be marked as certified through copy from the original by the law by the head of the processing office in addition to the schedules as certified mentioned above. No? So, ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na uh, yung mga source documents natin sa yung computation natin. No? Uh, maayos. In case the input VAT of capital goods was disallowed due to non-compliance with the invoicing requirements for local purchases or for some other reasons, which may warrant absolute disallowance of the corresponding input VAT, the taxpayer claimant is already barred from claiming the input VAT from the said purchases for the current claim and thereafter. No? So, yan na. Yung mga disallowed due to non-compliance, so hindi na pwedeng i-claim ang input tax. Determining the allowable input tax on construction in progress. Ito yung construction in progress. Ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung input tax mo during the time na nagko-construct ka kasi purchase ka ng purchase ng materials. No? So, construction in progress is the cost of construction work which is not yet completed. No? So, CIP is not depreciated until the asset is placed in service. Kasi, di ba yung asset, yung pinapakonstruct mo na building, depreciable assets yan. Kung halimbawa, um, concrete yan, no? so, depreciate mo siya ng 20 years. But, uh, kung hindi pa siya tapos, hindi ka pa pwede mag-depreciate. No? So, normally, upon completion, uh, uh, construction in progress item is reclassified and the reclassified asset is capitalized and depreciated. No? CIP is considered for purposes of claiming input tax as a purchase of service. No? The value of which shall be determined based on the progress billing until such time the construction has been completed. It will not qualify as capital goods as herein defined, in which case input tax credit on such transaction can be recognized in the month the payment was made, provided that an official receipt of payment has been issued based on the progress billing. Take note po ha, na itong sinasabi natin dito, construction in progress. At paano ba ang construction in progress? Doon sa mga nag-hire ng contractor, no? So, meron silang kontrata no? na uh, contract for construction of building. Lahat ng billing ng contractor, labor and materials, kasama na yan doon sa official receipt na i-issue ng uh, contractor. Once nag-bill siya, alibaw, yung kontrata is 100 million. No? So, every time na mag-bill yung contractor, official receipt ang i-issue. Pero, on the other hand, iba yun. Pagka, halimbawa, ikaw yung nagpa-construct ng building, tapos hindi mo naman siya pinakontrata. No? Ang kinontrata mo doon, labor lang, ang materials, iba yung ikaw ang bumili. So, iba yon hindi yung kasama dito. Ha? In case of contract for the sale of service where only the labor will be supplied by the contractor and the materials will be purchased by the contractee from other suppliers, info tax credit on the labor contract, Contracted shall still be recognized on the month the payment was made based on a progress billing while input tax on the purchase of materials shall be recognized at that time the materials were purchased. So, yung labor only na pinakontrata mo, so official receipt yan, progress billing. Pero yung materials na binili mo at the time of purchase. Uh, so, doon mo i-recognize yung uh, input tax. Kaya nga, karamihan sa nagpapakonstruct talaga ng building, na may mga businesses, malaki yung kanilang input tax during the time na nagpapa uh, sa sila ng building. For purchases of goods, check the subsequent payment of the items purchased and determine if there are discounts granted, returns, and allowances. Input tax credit should be reduced by the VAT portion of the said adjustment to the purchase. If a VAT registered person is also engaged in zero rated sales, exempt and taxable activities, Determine the input tax is directly attributable to its activity. However, if the input tax is paid for purchases of goods, properties, or services could not be directly attributable to any activity, the same shall be allocated as shown in the illustration in Annex C3. No? Okay. My question now? Okay. Shout out? Ilan yung viewers natin? 
Okay. So, number of days allotted to grant VAT refund or tax credit certificate or TCC within the 90-day period, no? So, time frame to process, review, and approve claims for refund or issuance of TCC, no? So, ito yung sa, sa VAT division no, sa na, National Office na mga claims. Ito yung mga number of days, no? So, tingnan natin for verification or processing hanggang sa approval, 75 days, no? For claim more than 50 uh, million up to 150 million, 75 days. Uh, for claims more than 150 million, 75 days, no? Yung sa large taxpayers then 75 days. Yung sa regional claims, 75 days, no? Um, sa BIR National Office naman, ito yung mga total number of days, 15, no? For VAT refund claims filed and processed at the regional offices, total number of days, uh, 15, no? Okay. Okay. So, we have the Annex G.1. Ito naman po yung documents required to be prepared or attached to a VAT credit or refund case docket for claims filed under Section 112A of the Tax Code of 1997 as amended. Ano yung 112A? Ito yung cancellation o VAT registration. No? So, ano yung mga dokumento? So, very important for us to know the documents. Bakit? Kasi tayo yung magkukumplay nito mga documents na to. No, if they, we are the accountant sa atin yan sasabihin ng client, no? So documents, working papers and attachments. Number 1, copy of tax verification notice or the TVN, no? Number 2, documents and schedule submitted by the taxpayer claimant per checklist of requirements in Annex A.1, excluding items 2.2 and 3.2 where the original copies will be returned to the taxpayer after verification thereof and the soft copies of sales invoices and official receipts for both sales and purchases including supporting documents shall be retained at the processing office. The processing office shall have the option to transmit the said documents to the records division section for file and future reference. No? Number three, documentary proofs of foreign currency remittances for export sales. So, ito na yung para sa uh, proof ng uh, export sales. No? Uh, working papers with initials of the assigned revenue officer showing computation of recom recommended VAT refund, VAT due, whichever is applicable. Computation of adjustment to the amount of claim, if applicable. Alpha list of local suppliers with TIN as verified in ITS and total purchases per supplier identifying the big ticket suppliers. Reconciliation of sales and input taxes of financial statements, figures with VAT returns, figures and application for VAT refund if applicable. Allocation of input tax among zero rated exempt and taxable sales if applicable. All other schedules, analysis and working papers as may be prepared by the assigned ROs. No? For big ticket purchases pursuant to RMO number 16-2007, Summary list of sales, purchases, importation, SLSP, SLP, SLI, as provided by the Audit Information Tax Exemption and Incentives Division, and or corresponding result of the verification on relief or the BOC importations with reconciliation of relief data versus declaration of the claimant on local purchases and importation. In the absence of data on sales of big ticket, Suppliers to claimants proof of secondary evidence of payments of purchases with input tax, no? photocopies of paid checks, bank debit advice, or any form of settlement in favor of the supplier for the account of the taxpayer's claimant. Next is the endorsement to the revenue district officer having jurisdiction over suppliers of the claimant of the duly ascertained discrepancy under declaration of sales after matching purchases of the claimant with the sales of his or her, his, its suppliers from the data provided by the AITN. 
Uh, Revenue Officer's Memorandum Report stating, among others, the following, the legal basis of the claim, uh, the business undertaking of the taxpayer, the legitimacy and actual existence of the business. Uh, kasi baka mamaya, fake naman yung existence ng business. Uh, relevant verification procedures undertaken, particularly on big ticket items of purchases, Proof of actual exportations and inward remittances of proceeds from zero-related sales. The reasons for denial or disallowance, if any. Then findings resulting from the verification that impact on the claim and computation of, of amount of VAT credit or refund recommended, if any. And then authority to issue VAT refund or TCC, Annex H. VAT credit or refund notice, Annex 1.1 of or Annex 1.2, whichever is applicable. And then we have the table of contents. No? And then the VAT credit refund covering sheets. Annex J1, J2, and J3. Uh, letter B, separate folder for approved claim on importations. Ito internal na. Bakit natin ni-explain sinasabi sa inyo? Para alam natin kung from the moment na uh, wala na sa atin yung docket ng VAT, wala na sa atin yung dokumento, ano yung nangyayari? Ano yung ginagawa? No? So, separate folder for approved claims on importations. In case of approved claims on importations, a separate folder or docket containing the following pertinent reports and documents has to be prepared for transmittal to the BOC after approval of the report. From the processing office, schedule of importation for the period of claim. Huh? And then import entry declarations, single administrative documents, VAT payment certification issued by the BOC, uh, RAD, and import entry documents and official receipts, statement of settlement of duties and taxes, SSDT, covering payment of VAT, and endorsement of BOC signed by the authorized approving official. So, yun yung mga dadaan pa sa Bureau of Customs. Exportation. No? From the reviewing office, third assessment. Uh, division of Regional Offices for Attachment to Item 1 above, approved authority to issue VAT refund or TCC, and then the approved Revenue Officer's Memorandum Report. From the Processing Office or the Large Taxpayer Audit Division, schedule of information for the period of claim, import entry declaration, single administrative document, VAT payment certification and import entry documents, and official receipt, Statement of Settlement of Duties and Taxes. Approve Authority to Issue VAT Refund. Approve Revenue Officer's Memorandum Report and Endorsement to BOC signed by the Commissioner. Okay, so, doon pa lang po sa requirements, hilong-hilo na yung <laughs> accountant. <laughs> My goodness. Kaya, alam nyo, yung si Bain na lang talaga ako eh, pero... At my age, minsan na iniisip ko na ayaw ko na. No? Kasi, ibig sabihin, ito ba't pa lang ito ha? Isang klaseng tax pa lang ito. Ganito na karami yung maging requirements kung meron kang claim for refund. No? But anyway, trabaho ito. At para sa akin, ang trabaho is a blessing. So, tuloy. Kahit na sabihin mo pang mahirap, but sometimes, nasa hirap naman pag may tiyaga ka dyan, ka rin uh, magkakaroon ng blessings. No? So, Annex G.2, documents required to be prepared or attached to a VAT credit or refund case docket for claims filed under Section 112B of the Tax Code of 1997 as amended. No? So, letter A, documents or working papers and attachments. Copy of Tax Verification Notice or TBN. No? TBN, ito yung authority ng examiner to uh, audit. Documents and schedules submitted by the taxpayer claimant per checklist of requirements in Annex A.2 with the initial of the assigned RO on the schedules after verification and vouching of the supporting documents. Huh? So, alpha list of local suppliers within as verified in ITS and total purchases per supplier identifying the big ticket suppliers. No? For big ticket purchases for so on to RMO number 16, that's 2007. Okay. Summary list of sales 
uh, purchases, importations as provided by the Audit Division, Tax Information and Incentive Division, AIT, and or corresponding result of the verification on relief, uh, BOC, importation, yung dadaan pa po sa Bureau of Customs. In the absence of data on sales of big ticket suppliers to claimants, proofs of secondary evidence of payment or purchases with input tax, no? photocopies of paid checks, bank debit advice, or any form of settlement in favor of the supplier for the account of the tax payer claimant. No? Endorsement of the revenue district officer having jurisdiction over suppliers of the claimant on the duly a certain discrepancy under declaration of sales after matching purchases of the claimant with the sales of his or its suppliers from the data provided by the AIT ed. Uh, uh, next is the working paper showing computation of recommended VAT refund, but you whichever is applicable. And then computation of adjustment to the amount of claim if applicable. Reconciliation of sales and input taxes of financial statements, figures with VAT returns, figures and application for VAT refund if applicable. Alpha list of local suppliers with TIN as verified in ITS and total purchases per supplier identifying the big ticket suppliers. Allocation of input tax among zero rated exempt and taxable sales if applicable. And all other schedules, analysis, and working papers as may be prepared by the assigned ROs or revenue officers. No? Revenue officers memorandum report stating among others the following, the legal basis of the claim, the business undertaking of the taxpayer, the legitimacy and actual existence of the business, the reasons for denial or disallowance if any, findings resulting from the verification that impact on the claim and computation of amount of VAT credit refund recommended, if any. Authority to issue VAT refund or TCC, Annex H. VAT credit or refund notice, Annex 1.1 or Annex 1.2, whichever is applicable. Table of contents, VAT credit or refund covering sheet, Annex J1, J2, and J3. Separate folder for approved claims on importation. Oh, sa importation naman to. In case of approved claims on importations, a separate folder docket uh, containing the following pertinent reports and documents has to be prepared for transmittal to the BOC after approval of the report. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng docket? Ang docket po, yan yung files, no? Na, nandyan yung folder, tapos may table of contents yan, nandun lahat ng files ng dokumento na na-submit, no? nandun lahat ng reports. Okay. Uh, from the Processing Office or RDO, Schedule of Importation for the Period of Claim, Import Entry Declaration, Single Administrative Documents, VAT Payment Certification Issued by BOC or RAD, and Import Entry Document and Official Receipts Statement of Settlement of Duties and Taxes, is SDT Covering Payment of VAT, and Endorsement to BOC is signed by the Authorized Approving Official. From the Reviewing Office Assessment Division of Regional Offices for Attachment Item 1 above. Ito yung approved authority to issue what refund or TCC and approved revenue officer's memorandum report. Sinabi mo approved revenue officer's memorandum report, may mga signatories na po yung mga higher ups. No? From the Processing Office or LTAD, Schedule of Importation for the Period of Claim, Import Entry Declaration, Single Administrative Document, VAT Payment Certification and Import Entry Document, and Official Receipts or Statements of Settlement of Duties and Taxes. And then Approve Authority to Issue VAT Refund, and then Approve Revenue Officer's Memorandum Report and Endorsement to BOC signed by the Commissioner. Okay. May question na? Okay. Ha? Hindi, ang dami kaya. Nire-review ko yung ating mga sa ano, sobrang dami. Kaso lang, kaso lang, kung wala pang live ngayon, tapusin po natin to kasi bitin tayo dito. No? Napakahaba po nitong, uh, ito po yung pinakabago na uh, 
RMO for bad refund, no? So, tapusin natin. For your reference din po, kasi yung iba na gusto pa na uh, makita o malaman yung mga uh, procedural requirements, then may ano kayo, may uh, basis, no? So, for the documents required to be prepared or attached to a bad credit or refund or case docket for claims filed under sections 229 of the task code of 1997 as amended. Ito yung mga erroneous payment, no? Documents or working papers and attachment. Copy of task verification notice. Documents and schedules submitted by the taxpayer claimant per checklist of requirements in Annex A.3 with the initial of the assigned RO on the schedules after verification and vouching of the supporting documents. Working papers showing computation of recommended VAT refund, VAT due, whichever is applicable. No? Computation of adjustment to the amount of claim, if applicable. Revenue officer's memorandum report stating, among others, the following. The legal basis of the claim, the business undertaking of the taxpayer, the legitimacy and actual existence of the business, the reason for denial or disallowance, if any, then findings resulting from the verification that impact on the claim, and then the computation of amount of what credit or refund recommended, if any. The authority to issue what refund or TCC, the what credit refund notice, no, and then the table of contents, and then the what relief refund covering sheets. No? So, yun po yung requirements under to nine. Ito naman yung example, Annex H, ito yung authority to issue VAT refund or tax credit certificate. No, ito yun na yung uh, format, the date, the name of the taxpayer claimant, the address, the taxpayer identification number, the period of claim, the amount in figures per BAR and then BOC, and then the amount in words, and, and then signature over printed name of the approving revenue official. And then we have here the example of Annex 1.1, the VAT refund notice, no? So, nakalagay dyan yung name of the claimant of the taxpayer and the date and then yung amount, no? Na kung magkano yung VAT refund niya or claim, no? And then this is part of the due process requirements, no? So, sinasabi dito, the approved report on the said claim will be subject to post-audit by the Commission on Audit as mandated under Section 112D of the NIRC of 1997 as amended and or further audit investigation under the directive of higher authorities. No? Should there be findings requiring adjustment, deduction of the amount granted, the deficiencies of tax or excess tax refund or credit shall be collected and or deducted from future tax refund claims if there is any. No? So, yun yung nakalagay dyan sa uh, notice ng VAT refund or credit. No? Ito naman yung VAT uh, refund or credit, no? Annex 1.2. Uh, nature, name of claimant or taxpayer, address, gentleman, no? Ito yung reference niya. And then the um, local purchases niya na refund and then sa importation niya na refund, no? Okay. So, ano itong mga sunod? The VAT refund or credit covering sheet. No? So, form part of the docket, the VAT refund, the uh, uh, covering sheet for claims filed at large taxpayer service. Ito namang isa uh, for VAT, uh, for claims filed at the VAT credit audit division. Yung isa national office, no? The VAT audit. And then, the VAT refund or credit covering sheet for claims filed at revenue district offices. Okay, so monthly report on claims for tax refund issuance of tax credit certificate filed for the month. Ito na yung mga reports, no? Monthly reports sa VAR na po to. Paano nila monitor yung mga refund, no? Okay. So, anong oras na sa ating uh, lang oras na tayo? 1 hour 15. 15 minutes. O, sige. Sobrang dami hari ng mga questions dyan. No? Yung iba na sagot ko na, na ano, pero yung iba marami pa rin. No? So, ano yung mga marami dyan? Sa, sa mga tutorial, sa books, sa 
uh, how to fill up the form. Ang dami pa lang question dyan sa 1904, sa 1901. Yan, tingnan mo. And, uh, sasagot na po tayo. May shout out? Wala pa pong shout out. O, sige. Ilan na lang yung viewers natin? 11. O, sige. Tapos na po tayo sa lecture po natin sa battery fan. So, pero yung, ang gusto kong mangyari doon, magkakaroon talaga tayo ng workshop para maturoan talaga tayo how to reconcile no? our bat records. Yeah, tiyagaan po natin yan. At once na alam na natin yun, may sistema na hindi na tayo mahirapan. No? Especially doon sa mga complicated. Actually, ang daming findings dyan sa mga importations na hindi talaga nagtatali sa bat returns ng taxpayer. Sa video po na ang BIR Form 2304. 2304, para saan yan? Ano yung BIR Form 2304? <clears throat> Tignan natin. 2304, certificate yan eh. Certificate to be income payment not subject to withholding tax, No. Excluding compensation income. Sige. Anong question niya? Uh, pero yung tanong niya, ma'am, siya na tanong si Rami de Arojo Adjokatse. Okay. So, shout out to Rami de. Rami de. Okay. okay. Tanong niya lang po, ma'am, ano daw po yung requirements sa 2305? 2305. Para may pass daw yung dalawa niya kanal. 2305, update of information. Yan, wala na nga dito, Yung 2305, nasa 1905 na po ngayon yan, no? Application for registration, information update, or correction, or cancellation. Actually, hindi na sila masyado particular. Kasi, hindi na rin po masyado hinahanap yan ng BIR, considering na yung exemptions ngayon is 250,000 na. So, wala na yung merit, wala na additional dependents, wala na ano. So, ang gagawin nyo po, doon kayo mag-update sa office nyo. No? If you are an employee, Doon kayo mag-update sa office nyo. Pero if you are a businessman, hindi na din po masyadong particular ang BIR dyan. No? Kaya tingnan nyo sa forms, wala na yung 2305. Asa na yung mga updates sa 1905. No? Pero kung gusto nyo talagang ipasok, alimbawa sa BIR, you fill up BIR form 1905. Pero wala din nakalagay doon yung update ng additional dependent. Eh. No? Kasi pasok na po siya doon sa 250,000 na ano. Kaya yung mga additional uh, exemptions, may red, wala na po yun, no? Tinanggal na ng BIR yan. Sa video po na when to file tax return using EPS tsaka EBIR. Forms. Okay. Ang may tanong po si Fel Perez. Okay, so shout out to Fel Perez. Sabi niya ma'am, nabanggit niyo po yung amend dahil sa maling form version ang naisend. Okay. Paano daw po mag-amend? Ano daw po ang pwedeng gawin? Uh -huh. So, ang gagawin mo dyan, i-fill up mo yung tamang form na version. No? And then, ilagay mo na, halimbawa, is this an, uh, uh, dun sa box na, is, is this an amended return? Yes or no? Then, ilagay mo dun na yes kasi nag-amend ka na. Eh. No? Pero, para sa akin, hindi nga yan considered na amended kasi wrong return yung una mo eh. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa talaga nag-file ng tama. No? So, ang gagawin mo, i-file mo yung tama na uh, form, mag-fill up ka ulit, and then isabit mo po sa BIR. So, sa next question po, galing kay Ma'am Diane Griggs. Okay. Ako, dun sa video nga, submission of inventory list. And okay. Ang tanong niya, Ma'am, uh, kapag po ba no inventory, kailangan pa din ng sworn declaration? No inventory. Uh, dapat meron. Kasi kasama po yan sa, sa requirement ng uh, RR ba yung ano? RR or RMO? Yung 15-2015. Uh, no? uh, since kasama po yan dun sa report, so halimbawa wala kang inventory, kasama pa rin yung sworn statement or affidavit. Kasi parang yan yung proof mo na uh, wala ka talaga yung inventory. So anong ilalagay mo dun sa sworn statement? That you have no inventory during the uh, year. No? 
kasi yun yung magiging basis kasi ng BAR na proof na wala ka talagang inventory during the year. No? Okay. Okay. Ito ma'am, next po na question sa Q&A po natin ng claims for VAT or tax rate. Claim for VAT. Ah, uh, sige. Ang nagtala po si Franklin Mercado. Okay. Shout out to Franklin Mercado. Tanong niya po, regarding daw po sa refund ng VAT on importation of machine. Okay. Or goods. Okay. Uh, turned out uh, defective yung machine. So, we return sa, sa suppliers afterwards. Okay. Pwede ba namin ma-refund ang input VAT sa BIR? Ay, hindi. Hindi, kasi binalik nyo na. Actually, cancelled na yung ano eh. Cancelled na yung transaction. So, dapat wala na kayong kinlame, no? So, in that case, siguro, ano ba yung mag possible na scenario? Uh, since uh, nag-import uh, kayo, so you claim the input tax. And subsequently, since defective, binalik nyo. So, as if na walang kayong export, no? Uh, wala kayong import. So, anong mangyayari dyan? Canceled yung, ano, hindi na valid yung transaction. Hindi na rin valid yung resibo, whatever it is na uh, binayad nyo. Ang magiging tanong mo naman dyan is, binayad mo na yung VAT, no? Tapos, binalik nyo sa supplier. So, depende yan sa usapan nyo ng supplier. Dapat, pati yung VAT, pinarefund nyo sa supplier. No? Kasi sila yung may kasalanan. Pero I don't think na, sa para sa BIR maklaim niyo yung VAT why kasi kinansel niyo na yung transaction kinansel niyo na rin yung uh, resibo for that no but if ever na hindi na cancel yung resibo doon sa importation then pwede niyo pong i-claim no kasi bayad yun eh binayaran niyo na yun eh ang magiging problema lang diyan hindi na tuloy yung transaction no pero kung the amount has already been paid and then hindi naman din nerefund noong uh, supplier then pwede nyo i-claim kasi nag-expend nag nagastos nyo na no? gumastos na kayo doon okay so next po ma'am galing kay ma'am Alessandra Paspasan okay ang um, question ko po uh, regarding sa e-sales Okay, ala yung e-sales sa ari, di pa natin ginawa yan yung e-sales na e-sales reporting yan ha yung sa cost register machines no yung mga uh, machines natin na nag-iissue ng resibo okay Ah, ito po. Natanya ko ang mga nag-file ako ng e-sales. Okay. Pero hindi ko na hindi ko siya na-save sa e-sales na website. Oh. Mali Para yung pag-submit nyo. May penalty daw po ba? Yun? May penalty po yan. That is tantamount to non-submission. No? Kasi bakit hindi niyo siya si name so hindi yun natanggap ng system? So, ang gagawin natin dyan, Hari, punta talaga tayo sa BR at magpa-explain tayo about e-sales. No? So, punta na tayo dyan sa RDO 39. Ang problema natin, may mag-entertain ba tayo sa atin, eh, may mga pumapasok pa bang empleyado dyan? Kasi karamihan, schedule-schedule lang eh. Di ba? Parang nagulang na ako. Ngayon? O, oh, sige. So, punta tayo dyan na lang sa RDO 39, no? Then, magpa-explain tayo dyan kasi... Uh, may mga bago din sila eh. At saka maglalag ka talaga sa system dyan eh. No? Sige. Okay, next po ma'am, uh, sa video po na ito kita PIR form 1604C. Okay, so... Ito po si Alvin C. Okay, 1604C, yan yung alpha list natin ng compensation, no? Sige. Ang dami niya po ma'am, ano daw po yung ilalagay sa withholding agent? Kapag po wala naman pong empleyado. Withholding agent, walang empleyado. Yung information po na nasa COR nyo, yun yung kopyahin nyo. And then, pagdating sa remittances, wala kayong remittance. Lagay nyo, di ba? Sabi dyan kung, kung not applicable, lagay nyo na in A if not applicable. Then, lagyan nyo po na not applicable. But of course, Uh, may empleyado kayo pero wala kayong withholding tax na remittance no kasi halimbawa minimum wage earner sila so wala talagang withholding o kaya yung income nila hindi naman umabot ng 250,000 in a year so exempt pa rin po siya sa income tax okay okay ano pang question niya 
Ano anong anong question niya diyan sa 16 of or say it? Yung ano ma'am, yung sabi ko ni agent daw po. Ano daw po yung ilalagay ito kapag wala naman daw po empleyado? Oy, yung yung withholding agent kasi yun yung name of taxpayer na may empleyado. So, it, it will be reconciled with your registration sa BIR, no? So, halimbawa, nagpa-register ka sa BIR, nagpa-register ka as withholding agent dahil meron kang uh, empleyado. So, ang ibig sabihin lang, hindi ka withholding agent kung hindi ka nagpa-register sa BIR at wala kang empleyado. Ang mahirap dyan, wala kang empleyado, pero nagpa-register ka as withholding agent. So, anong gagawin mo? Matanggal mo yung tax type mo na withholding tax compensation no para hindi ka uh, magpa-file ng 1601C and uh, also pero ang 1604C kasi at the end of the year yan eh so kung wala kang empleyado then hindi ka dapat mag-file niyan no okay okay next po ma'am sa video na tutorials on how to close the books of accounts how to close the books of accounts okay ang uh, uh, alam mo Nung tinignan ko yan, na-review ko, ang haba pala niya. <laughs> Pero mo, ang haba. Samantala yung tutorial natin doon sa mga subsidiary sales, ano, 19 minutes lang. No? Ay, sabi ko siguro, yung tingin pa lang sa number of hours, ayaw nang tingnan yung na, nahahabaan na. No? Oo, sige. Pagkatanong po si Val Andre, TV. Okay. Ang tanya po ma'am, ano daw po yung ilalagay, nilalagay sa mga books of accounts sa pagpapalit ng taon? RMC ba yun? Ano, ano, ano yung ilalagay? Ano daw po yung mga nilalagay sa mga books of accounts sa pagpapalit ng taon? RMC? Yung nilalagay? RMC ba yun? <laughs> uh, ano yun? Uh, na, naligaw lang yan, no? Pero uh, ang tanong niya, ano yung linalagay sa books of accounts? Ah, uh, yun na yun, yung mag, mag ano ka, yung mag close ka. Closing the books of accounts ba yan o adjusting the journal entries? Closing. Closing. Yun magko-close ka is ano yung ilalagay mo, isisero mo lahat na account, no? Kaya nandiyan may ano tayo, may video tayo diyan. Isisero mo na siya, bakit? Lahat ng mga nominal accounts, ibig sabihin yung income statement accounts, zero talaga yan at the end of the year. Lahat naman ng balance sheet accounts, ito yung cash, accounts receivable, uh, inventory, yung ending balance niyan, hindi yan magkuklose. Kasi bakit? Ikikere mo yan doon sa beginning year. So, anong gagawin mo? Lahat ng ending balance mo ng balance sheet accounts mo, cash, um, assets, at saka liabilities, equities mo, dalhin mo yan sa libro mo the following year as your beginning balance. No? Saan mo yan ilalagay? Doon sa ledger. Yun ang beginning balance mo sa ledger. Pero yung beginning balance mo sa ledger ng mga income, sales, wala pa yun. Zero yun. Kasi mag-umpisa ka talaga for the following year. No? So, maganda, maganda, maganda din yung tanong niya. Kasi, uh, sa, parang sabihin mo napaka-basic, pero importante. No? Kaya nga, sabi mo, anong gagawin, anong ilalagay. So, ang ilalagay mo sa beginning of the year, lahat ng uh, balance ng balance sheet accounts, ilagay mo na doon sa ledger. No? Kasi beginning balance niya yun. Pero yung mga um, uh, income statement accounts, yung mga sales, expenses, huwag mo na siyang ilagay. Yung account lang na title ang ilagay mo. Pero yung uh, amount, wala kasi zero po talaga yan ang umpisa. Next sa... Uh, Hari, sandali oh. lang. May ano ako dyan. Papaano nila malaman na yung kanilang mga question na sagot na natin? Kasi I go over it. At, okay, nagtanong tayo. Q&A, question and answer. Paano nila malaman na yung questions nila na sagot na natin? So, kaya mo ba yan? Habang nandiyan ka, nagsasagot ako, maano mo? Hindi, di ba? So, yun yung sabi ko. Kasi, tanong nila yan eh. So, dapat sila ang unang nakakaalam dyan. So, paano nila malaman na yung mga tanong nila nasagot natin? O, so, anuhin mo dyan? Ilista mo yan. 
No, along the way na binabasa mo yan, ilista mo and after that talagang kailangan sagutin yan. Kasi kasi ako, oo. So anong gagawin mo since iba-ibang mga videos yan, isulat mo talaga para hindi ka ma uh, ligaw, di ba? Kasi ang tagal na natin nag QQ&A. Paano malaman nung uh, nag-post ng question na nasagot na yung kanyang question? No? So, anuhin mo, isulat mo para hindi ka maligaw, kaya mong balikan yung, kung sino man yung nasagot na, sasagutin talaga dyan sa reply na portion. No? Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, parang unanswered pa rin siya. Pag hindi mo siya talagang sinagot dun sa comment. No? Tsaka mayroon tayong record book, Harry. Kasi, halimbawa, may magtanong, may mga follow-up question. Ito pong tanong ko noong ganito. At least, may, mag, ano tayo, maglagay ka ng isang record book habang nag-question and answer tayo, may date, para, at saka kung ano yung mga questions, ano yung mga forms, for easy reference, no? Kasi, halimbawa, may follow-up question, at least, madali lang nating hanapin. Kahit do, dito sa messenger natin, kahit dito sa ano, kailangan nag-keep track rin tayo dyan. At saka lalo na doon sa mga members natin kasi kailangan na rin nating magpa-renew ng membership fee sa kanila. No? Hmm. Sige. Sige. Ito ang sa video po na yung live natin pa rin na Kings for Value Added Tax. Ah, live? Ah, kasi sa live ba, si, ba may nagko-question ba sa comment? Wala pa rin po man Hindi, sa live na sabi Opo, mo. Oo, may nagko-comment din po. Dyan. Later, pagka na-reply na. Opo, reply na. Ah, okay, sige. Ang nagtanong po si Vivo CD. Okay. Ang tanong na po sa 1701Q daw po. Seven, uh, pag 1701Q, income. Opo, sa pag-file ng second quarter, paano kung ang income mo sa buwan na yan ay nailagay mo sa maling box? May paraan daw po ba doon? Mag-amend po kayo. No? Kasi kung, kung income mo yan, tapos nilagay mo sa maling box, eh kung anong box yung nilagay mo, doon yun, hindi siya magiging income. No? So, lahat po ng mali. Lahat po ng mali. Kaya, the BIR allows uh, taxpayer to amend its return. Kasi pag nagkamali siya, i-amend niya. No? So, actually, yan po yung, uh, yung purpose ng amended return. So, every time na magkamali ka, amend ng amend. Kaya nga, walang limit yung amend, amended returns eh. Ano lang yung limit? Once na meron na letter of authority issued na under audit ka na, hindi ka na pwede mag-amend. No? So, pero habang wala pang letter of authority, pwede ka pang mag-amend ng mag-amend. No? So, want to sawa ka dyan sa amended, eh, alam nga naman, puro ka na lang mali. No? So, pwede pong i-amend. Basta at may mali, mag-amend po. Ito sa video ko na income tax return for 1701 guide. 1701 guide, okay? 1701, yun yung ating income tax na matagal na. Yun pa, alam nyo, yun pa yung pinakasekad na video na upload natin. No? Medyo marami pang kaba sa dibdib dyan. <laughs> okay. Ano nga po, ma'am? Uh, ask ko lang po, As ko lang po, it's okay lang po ba na 1701 din na gamit namin pero purely self-employed po kami? O mm. kailangan ko po ipaklay para maging 1701A? 1701A is for um, annual income tax return for individuals earning income purely from business or profession. No, uh, Those under the graduated income tax rates with OSD as mode of deduction or those who opted to avail of the 8% flat income tax rate. So, pwede po kayong gumamit ng 1701. So, ano sabi niya? Ba, magpapa-amend? Bakit siya magpapa-amend? Uh, kung kailangan daw po bang ipa-update para maging 1701A? Kasi hmm. 1701 daw yung ginagamit nila. Uh, OSD ba siya? Optional standard deduction ba siya? Or uh, nasa option rate ba siya? Kasi itong 1701A, para ito sa... Mga individuals earning purely from business and uh, profession, 
na ang ginamit nila optional standard deductions at saka 8% option rate. Pero kung halimbawa purely from business or profession ka, pero itemized deduction yung ginamit mo, doon ka pa rin sa 1701, no? So, ano yan? I-qualify mo yung answer, ang answer dati dyan. Kung uh, purely from business and profession ka at saka optional standard deduction ka at saka 8% option rate, pwede na 1701A ka. No? Hindi ka na mag-amend. Yun na yung gamitin mong form. No? Hindi ka na yung anong gagawin mo para mapalitan. Ikaw yung magpalit. No? Instead na 1701 ang gamitin mo, 1701A ang gamitin mo. Provided, hindi ka itemized deduction. Ha? Kasi kahit purely, uh, purely business and profession ka, kung itemized deduction ka naman, 1701 pa rin yung gagamitin mo. Yung 1701A para lang yan sa optional standard deduction at saka sa 8% option rate. Okay. Meron na? Ba, mga alas 10 na sila nag-question. Nag okay. Sige. Si, nagkaroon po man si Ma'am Lilian niya. Okay po. Bilib talaga ako kay Ma'am Lilian, no? Well, ang sipag. Sige po. Yun ma'am sa ano, sabi niya po kung ano daw ilalagay sa alpha list ng 1604C. Kung wala naman daw pong overbidden sa tax ng employee. Salary lang po. Yung Di kumil... lang daw po bang blanco? Ako ah, walang withholding, lagyan niyo po na in A kasi di ba anong anong instruction natin sa 16 um uh, sa alpha list no. Ah, sa alpha list. Sa may over withheld tax. Kung wala naman daw pong ganun, okay lang daw po ba blanco? Wag niyo i-blanco kasi ang sabi sa instruction lagyan mo ng in A, di ba pag not applicable, no? In A po ang ilagay niyo hindi blanco. Not applicable. Ibig sabihin, wala. No? Siguro ma'am, zero lang. Kasi dito sa Alphalis, ma'am, number lang pwede ilagay. Ah, hindi ka pwedeng NA? Okay. Okay. Sige. Pero po sa form, siguro. Sa form, NA. Ano ba yung, ano niya, 1604C? Opo, na Alphalis daw po. Annual Information Return of Income Taxes with the Compensation. Yung mga schedule dyan. May mas schedule yan eh, sa annual information return. Zero na lang niya. Huwag niyang lagyan na blanco lang. Lagyan niyo po ng zero. Okay. Next po nang galing kay Sir MJ Logar. Live pa rin po ito. Live pa rin. O oh, sige. Paano ko po i-record kung sa purchase ko ang sales invoice ay dated hmm. as for example December pero actually na-receive po ang product ay January na. So, anong Kasi tanong? Kasi pag na-receive order ko, automatic ginagawa na yata resibo. Tapos, hindi muna din i-deliver. So, ano-ano yung tanong niya? Uh, anong recording niya? Opo, paano na po niya i-record? Kung sa purchase ko, ang sales invoice ay dated. For example, Jan December, pero, pero actually na, na receive niya na yung product ng January na. Actually, ang resibo po talaga sa... Pagre-record natin according to date. Ha? According to date yan. Hindi yan yung upon receipt. No? Kasi kung upon receipt, delivery receipt yan. That is already secondary receipt. Ang gamitin nyo po talaga na date is the date of receipt. Hindi po yung date of uh, uh, delivery. No? Yung date of the issuance of receipt. No? Hindi, hindi yung receipt of the goods. No? Hindi po yan. Kasi bakit? Yan na yung date ng resibo eh. And then, ang accounting naman natin is accrual. Kasi kung i-record mo lang yan, halimbawa, yung upon payment or whatever pa na mga uh, nangyayari, eh mag-iba yung treatment mo. I-accrual po tayo. Kaya yung uh, recognition natin dyan, at saka yung recording natin, date po talaga ng resibo. No? Kung kailan siya na-issue. Kasi during that time, ano ang rationale naman doon? During the time that the receipt has been issued, tapos na yung kung transaction nyo. Kung baga sa ano, yung issue na ng resibo yung supplier, ibig sabihin, consummated na yung sales. No? So, i-recognize na niyang sales yun. So, i-recognize mo na rin na purchases para tugma kayo. 
Otherwise, kung gusto mo na i-record siya on some other day of unreceipt, marami kang adjustment na gagawin, no? Kaya, kaya nga ang ni-require talaga ng batas natin, i-record mo yung resibo kung ano yung date na nandiyan sa resibo. Kasi alam mo naman din yun eh, no? Na consummated na yung sale kasi ikaw naman yung nakipag-transaction. Okay. Ito yung pinatukoy daw po pala ni Ma'am Lilian Yaw yung sa Alpanis. Yung, ang tanong ko kasi dito, uh, in case of overwithholding or overremittance, Okay. After the year and adjustment on compensation. Okay. Uh, have you released the refunds to your employee? Ang pamimilihan pa lang ang yes or no? Oo. Oh. Apo. So, yes. Kung wala naman daw kung ano? Uh, overwithheld. Kung walang overwithheld, yes or no? In a. So, na not applicable siya. So, meron naman dito blank ko lang. Oh, so blanco lang, not applicable talaga siya kasi wala ka namang overwithheld. So wala kang i-refund. Okay. Okay, lang po itanong sa live Okay, anong oras na? Uh, 1 hour 41 minutes. Oh, oh, sige. We still have 18 minutes. Sige. We we will entertain questions naman coming from the comment portion po ng mga uh, viewers natin po sa YouTube, no? So, alam nyo, kahit na sabihin nyo na, na para nasanay na kami dito sa YouTube, but then, uh, na excited din kami, no? Dahil magti-10,000 subscribers na itong ating tax training, no? Na parang <laughs> ang hirap, sobra, no? Pero we hold on, kaya... Yun na nga yung sabi ko sa inyo na yung mga kasabay natin na nag na, na, uh, bibidyo din ng uh, about taxation. Yung iba tumigil na, yung iba umayaw na, no? Eh, at least tayo nandito pa rin. Okay. Sige. Ito nang follow up ni Sir MJ Logar. Like po ito. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, kasi paano ko po i-record ang date of sales invoice? Hindi ko pa natatanggap. Uh, and, uh, so, ang mangyari dyan, anti-date mo. Uh, mga ilang days ang gap bagong matanggap yung uh, resibo. Kasi, uh, pwede yun na upon receipt, open pa naman yung box mo ng, alibaw, yung sabi mo na December, open pa naman yun eh. No? Kasi ikaw, ikaw naman yung magkuklose doon o kaya ano, so, ipasok mo siya doon sa date talaga na nandun pa sa libro nyo. Kaya ba yung sabi ko sa inyo, yung libro ninyo, huwag nyo ubusin yung pages. Halimbawa yung per month, per month ang gagawin ninyo. Tapos huwag nyo lahat ng pages ubos na ubos. No? Magbigay kayo ng kunting allowance kasi minsan may mga adjustment. Yun na yung sinasabi ko na uh, may mga adjustment pa na papasok. No? So, Hindi mo pa siya na ano, hindi mo pa siya na, re na receive noong December na dapat mo i-record. So kailan mo siya i-record upon receipt? Nung na receive mo na siya noong December, in in noong January i-record mo siya doon sa sa purchases mo na December, doon sa libro mo na December. Hindi naman 'yan kaagad-agad na binigay sa iyo yung nag-purchase ka. Tapos record ka kaagad. Ang requirement lang na everyday mo i-record yung sales. Pero yung purchases, pwede po yan na i-record mo on a monthly basis. No? Or a quarterly basis kung hindi mo naman kailan na report na monthly. No? So, ang requirement lang talaga na everyday you have to record yung sales. Bakit? Kasi hawak mo yung resibo eh. Yung sa purchases, kagaya niyan, sa malahit mong pinurchase, hindi mo pa hawak yung resibo. So, po pwedeng hindi mo muna siya i-record for the month of December. Noong January na na-receive mo, saka mo siya i-record, pero for the month of December, kasi December po siya na-purchases. Okay. So, yung, yung resibo na ni-receive mo ng January, i-record mo siya for the month of December. Pwede po yun. Sa video po na how to build up for 1904. Okay. So, yung 1904, nakita ko nga yan. Ang daming questions dyan. 
no? Ang tanong ko si Shikai na... A- a- alam mo, alam nyo, doon pala ako lalo, na para na-inspire na pa rin ako na to continue with the video, na in- information dissemination din po kasi itong ginagawa natin eh. Bakit? Kasi para sa akin, napaka walang kwenta nito, 1904, napakadali, parang, parang hindi siya technical yung ganun. Pero ang dami pa rin pala nangangailangan ng information about 1904. Kaya doon po ako natutuwa. No? Sige. No. Uh, ask ko lang po kung kailangan pa ba ng SPA or authorization letter kapag may papaayos. Yung mother ko po kasi nasa state. Eh. Ay, meron. Meron po talaga. Kung may ipapaayos siya sa inyo at sa, sa, sa BAR yun, dapat meron kayong um, SPA or special power of authority coming from her sa Sweden. No? Ano na yung mga requirements natin ngayon? Hindi na yung notarization na lagyan ng ribbon, di ba? Ang tawag doon, apostilized na, no? Apostilization ng uh, document. Pero, yung, yung apostilization ng document, depende pa yun sa country na i-allow din niya yung document ng BAR na same thing yung uh, requirement uh, sa Philippines. Kasi kung hindi, doon pa rin sa, sa uh, previous na requirements natin na yung ipa-authentic mo, ipanotarize mo siya sa embassy. No? So, I don't know kung yung Sweden, apostilized din sila. Uh, same treatment with the Philippines. So, po pwede yun. Pero kung hindi, doon ka talaga magpa-notaryo sa embassy. No? O kaya, yung mother mo sa Sweden, panotarize na niya doon and then padala sa'yo. So, kailangan po. Especially ngayon na, na we have the Data Privacy Act. No? Ito madam sa live, meron na po rin na. Okay. May tanong po si Ma'am Jerry kami okay. Pamarawan. Okay, so bago yan, no? So oh, shout out po sa iyo, Ma'am, Ma'am, ano? Jerry kami. Jerry kami. So, yeah. Ma'am, paano po kung ang sequence ng recording sa libro kung sa resibo kung sa resibo nila na una ang date ng invoice number 2 kaysa sa invoice number 1? Uh, yeah, ano mo na lang dyan ako linalagyan ko siya ng araw no? na yung araw to show na, na recognize mo talaga na nauna yung isa lagyan mo ng araw na uh, yung parang double ano ba yun? yung do, double araw na naka uh, ano siya yung naka siya doon sa isa tapos babalik mo siya doon sa isa parang i-point mo na dapat doon siya no nauna yung double arrow ilagay mo para na-recognize mo siya na mas nauna yung isa para ang ibig sabihin lang kinorek mo siya no since hindi mo naman siya ma na ilipat mo lagyan mo na lang ng arrow to show to the examiner na hindi in, hindi mo siya intentional na kita mo na yung pagkakamali mo at you direct the reader na mas nauna yung isa. No? Y- yan po usually ang ginagawa pagka uh, halimbawa nauna mong isulat yung isa, so lagyan mo siya ng araw. Pwede naman po yun, pero minsan lang yun, hindi yung lahat ng entry mo sa libro uh, mali o kaya lagyan mo ng araw ay hindi na acceptable yun. Yung, uh, yan, uh, minsan lang isang buwan, okay yun. Pero kung palagi na ma-penalize na kayo dyan. Kasi bakit? Ang issuance po natin ng resibo at sa recording natin ng resibo, sequential, no? Ibig sabihin ng sequential, sunod-sunod, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, mas nauna dapat yung 1 kaysa doon sa 3 or sa 2, no? So, in your case, nauna yung isa, yung 2 sa 1, so, maglagay ka ngayon ng araw, pointing na alam mo to na nagkamali at ito yung dapat na nauna. Okay sa comments na po ulit sa mga video. Okay. Sa live task compliance for January 2020. Okay. So pati yung pala sa ano, may, may nagko-comment ha. Akala ko yun doon sa video. So it's Sorry. nice po. Uh, alam mo mga since bago lang naman tayo na nag-YouTube, no? para sa akin baguhan pa rin ako eh. Hindi pa natin alam na ganun yung mga nangyayari. No? So, akala ko kasi doon na yung sa video yung mga comment na yan. So, pati din, pati din pala sa live. At saka akala ko yung chat lang yan doon sa gilid. So, pwede pa rin pala yung comment section, no? 
Okay. Yan, ang nagtanong po si Lunar B. Okay. Sabi niya po, uh, pwede, pwede po ba magtanong regarding sa pag-close ng business or sole proprietor? Yan, isa pa yan. Na, dapat natin i-video, ano, hari, kasi bakit? Ang dami nagkaka-open cases dahil magpa-register lang ng business, hindi na uh, pabayaan na pagka, halimbawa, na logi o kaya tinamad o kaya gusto nang pumunta sa ibang lugar, iwanan na lang yung registration. So, ano mangyayari? Nagkikreate na napakaraming open cases for how many years? So, ano yung dapat natin gawin? File na ang file o kaya ipaklose na. No? Sige. Uh, pwede daw po magtanong regarding sa pag-close ng business, uh, sole proprietor. Okay. If my pending accounts receivable pa po from government agencies, okay. Okay lang po bang mag-close na agad bago Ay, pa hindi. makakolek? Hindi po. payment na lang po kami ng percentage tax? Hindi po. Hindi talaga. Hindi kayo pwede. Ha, basta may collectibles pa kayo, parang winding up nyo yan. Anong gagawin nyo? Mag-file muna kayo na no operation return. At saka hindi lang yon. Yung inyong resibo, i-issue ninyo yun at the time na kakolekta kayo sa gobyerno. No? So, hindi muna kayo magko-close kung may accounts receivable pa kayo. Yung gagawin nyo, file lang muna kayo na no operation return. No? Pero yung sinasabi mo na i-advance nyo na lang ng bayad, hindi ho yan pwede. Kasi papaano yung resibo na issue nyo? Hindi naman pwede na nag-issue na kayo ng resibo na hindi pa bayad. No? So, anong gagawin nyo? File na lang kayo ng file ng no transaction ng mga returns para hindi kayo ma-open case. At pag nakolekta na, wala na talaga. Saka pa lang kayo mag-file ng um, ano sa BIR, yung closure. No? Kasi, hindi, hindi, hindi siya ba advisable na uh, may kinukolekta pa kayo at may papasok pa kayo na returns, no? Uh, sa file nyo pa yan, no? Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, the moment na may collectibles na kayo, subject pa yun sa income tax, magpa-file pa kayo ng income tax, magpa-file pa kayo ng VAT returns. No? So, hindi po talaga advisable na may collectibles pa kayo mag-closure na. No? Yun yung sinasabi natin na winding up. Okay? Nag-question po sa video na submission of inventory list. Okay. So, nagtanong po si Jerry Gia. Okay. Sabi niya, ma'am, uh, what if food cart po? We have no inventory oh. because we sell only one kind of perishable food. Okay. We don't have stock. Wala nga po na iiwan na stock sa Pios. Every day kasi we deliver new stock for the food we sell. Are we required to submit inventory? Ano bang ang, ta ang tanong diyan anong classification ng kanilang business? Kasi kung yung classification ng business mo, halimbawa, merchandise inventory ka, kailangan meron kang inventory. Why? Kasi merchandising yung ano mo, yung business mo. Anong tinitinda mo yan? Anong dinidisplay mo kung wala kang inventory? No? Pero kung food yan at uh, concessionaire lang kayo o kaya tagatinda lang kayo, posible na wala. No? Kasi... Pero meron din eh, kasi ano yung mga condiment nyo na ginagamit, yung mga sauce, yung mga perisha, uh, ano yan, mga consumables na nandyan. De depende ah. Kasi alam ko, kung halimbawa, uh, isang goods lang, tapos dinideliver lang sa inyo, posible na uh, meron pa kayong ibang gamit, kagaya ng mga mantika, halimbawa, kung piniprito yan, yung mga, uh, ano ba yan, yung... Uh, yung salt, pepper, uh, mga sauce, no? So, uh, kasama yan. Otherwise, ano yung uh, dinalagay mo dyan or dinidisplay mo sa store mo? No? Kasi, madali lang kasi natin sabihin na walang inventory. Pero usually, sa business talaga, meron. So, kung wala, kung wala, ha, ito, may marami na tayong feedback na natanggap. Kahit wala kang inventory, mag-submit ka pa rin ng Uh, list of inventory pero none no saka may affidavit ka pa rin na paper mahan na wala ka ng inventory okay ito magaling kay Meva ano daw po yung kung single proprietor na income does not exceed uh, 250,000 okay kasali din daw po ba sa tax exemption Kasali kayo sa tax exemption, pero sa filing hindi kayo exempt. Ano ibig sabihin nun? 
kahit na zero, kahit nga wala kang sales, pag meron kang business na nakaregister, you still have to file your income tax return. At lahat ng returns na nandiyan sa COR nyo, kailangan nyo pa rin yan i-file. No? Kahit wala pa kayong operation, kahit wala kayong income. Bakit? Kasi magkaka-open case kayo. Actually, Harry, yun yung mga wala pa tayong video. Yung tungkol sa open cases, yung tungkol sa closure ng business, na alam ko, these are very important. No? Pero pasensya na kayo kasi. Uh, minsan, nakakaligtaan natin no? yung mga topics na hindi masyadong uh, gamit. Pero ito, kailangan, kailangan to eh. No? So, yung mga... Meron pa akong nandyan na eh, na binubuo yung tax compliance for beginners. No? Tax compliance for beginners. O ka, papaano yung per tax type na mga... Papaano mong gamitin yung certificate of registration mo. Tsaka how important it is. No? And then, uh, yun na nga. Yung closure ng business. At saka yung... Uh, yung mga importante talaga na pang-araw-araw ng isang business na compliance, no? Tsaka siguro yung documentation ng business transaction, napaka-importante din. Kasi kahit alam ng iba, papel-papel lang yan, no? I-tapon dito, tapon doon na lang. Pero napaka-importante po yun. Okay? Ito ma'am sa live po ng viewers. Okay. Galing po dito kay Ma'am Jerry Kabin. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, ano po pala ang gagawin kung kaka-open ng business last quarter of last year? Okay. Tapos hindi sila nag-file na mga dapat i-file, like mga month before that. Okay. So, ang dapat pong gawin dyan, mag-file kayo ng late filing. No? So, titingnan mo ngayon, baka may mga resibo na sila na na-issue, may mga purchases na sila na na-purchase, may mga transactions na, tingnan mo kung anong month yan, at ipasok mo dun sa... Uh, returns for that month, no? So, ipa-file mo po talaga siya, pero late filing na. Mag-record ka muna, kasi wag na basta-basta file lang, ha? Mag-record ka muna dun sa bookso accounts mo, titingnan mo yung mga resibo, baka may na-issue na dyan, saka sa mga purchases, i-record mo muna yan sa journal ledger mo, cash receipt, gas disbursement, saka kagagawa ngayon ng mga returns, no? For the month. Declare nyo po talaga. Okay. Ito ma'am sa week. Wala lang po sa live. Okay. Sige. Ano oras na? 1 hour 57. Okay. Sige. Kaya pa. Ako sa video po na guide on how to file quarterly bank returns. Okay. Ako na tanong po si Ma'am Princess Peña Flor. Okay. Ano anong video yan? Yung sa how to file quarterly VAT 2550. Oo, ang dami ng viewers din dyan ha, pero wala pa tayong how to file yung monthly VAT. No? Tsaka yung percentage tax. <laughs> Sige po, magkakaroon tayo yan. Tsaka yung 2307 natin, Harry. Daw, daw. Sige, okay. Uh, may, I, may I ask if it's okay not to declare the tax because uh, I didn't know my amount of tax. Hmm. Hindi po yan okay. Kasi baka may tax ka talaga na dapat bayaran, hindi mo diniklare, mapipenalty po kayo. It's not okay. No? Uh, bakit hindi niya alam yung tax niya? Ha? A ano yung question niya? Kung okay lang daw po na huwag niyang i-declare yung tax because uh, hindi niya daw alam yung amount ng tax niya. Anong video yan? 2550 view. Ang baka ang sinasabi niya withholding tax, no? Yung amount of tax kasi kung output tax 'yan, malalaman mo kasi magko-compute naman ng computation yung returns eh kung magkano yung output mo. Baka yung sinasabi niya yung withholding, no? So, ang tanong is it okay na to ano, na to declare? Okay talaga. Bakit? Kasi ikaw yung mawawalan uh, at the Uh, advantage yan ng government. So, okay po talaga. Ang hindi okay, para sa iyo. Pero sa part ng government, okay po siya. O, tatanggapin. Okay. Ito, ma'am, sa video po na uh, sa dollar stocks guide. Oh, okay. Sige po. Ito lang po si uh, SOC 912. Okay. Tanong niya po ma'am, if ang donor and donee magkapatid, okay. uh, which is better, sale or donation? Ah, which costs less? 
um, yung yung unang tanong mo which is better sale or donation ang tanong ang sagot ko diyan is sale ang pangalawang tanong mo is which is uh, which cost less no kung yung donor or yung sale Yung tanong mo na pangalawa, pareho lang. Why? Kasi the rate of the donor's tax and also the rate of the uh, capital gains tax for sale of property is the same na ngayon, pareho ng 6%. Balikan natin yung question number one mo na which is better, sale or donation? No? For me, sale is better. Why? Because sale is re irrevocable while donation is revocable. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag nag-away na kayo o pag uh, hindi kayo magkasundo, alimbawa, may mga disagreement or what, pwedeng i-revoke yung donation. Pwedeng bawiin. Pero yung sale, hindi na. no Absolute na yung sale. Pag sinabi na, ay, ayoko na. Ayoko na ibenta sa iyo yan kasi uh, galit ako sa iyo. Hindi na pwedeng bawiin. O para sa akin, advantage yun para sa buyer na uh, yung transactions nyo is sale, hindi donor, no? Okay. Sa donor's tax pa rin, ma'am. Siya pa rin po yung tanong. Okay. Uh, ma'am, if nakabayad na ng donor's tax, pwede na madalhin hmm. sa RD para may transfer na pangalan Ay. sa donor for real property. Hindi, hindi pa po. Pag nakabayad na ng donor's tax, ipaprocess nyo pa po yun. May mga requirements pa yan doon sa uh, own it, yung one-time uh, transactions po na counter ng BIR, uh, may babayan pa kayo doon ng certification fee, dog stamps, and then mag i pa doon ng car yung certificate authorizing registration because without that, hindi po kayo tatanggapin ng register of deeds, no? So, after payment, ibalik mo nyo pa yung payment nyo sa BIR and also the uh, attachment na mga tax declarations, title, deed of donation, Ipaprocess pa po yun ng BAR, medyo matagal-tagal pa yan before nyo po pwedeng dalhin yan sa Register of Deeds and the Register of Deeds will transfer your title. No? Sige. Okay na? Ato, two hours na? Ayaw po ma'am, two hours ko minutes na. Okay. Ano pa ako na po may titigil yun? Uh, yung live meron pa? Wala na pong oh, sa okay. Pa tayong okay, so kung wala na pong tayong question sa live, no? Uh, thank you very much for watching po. And uh, uh, yung sa susunod siguro natin ang mga topic, pwede po kayong maglagay dyan, no? Ng comment or yung suggestions nyo para sa mga topics. Why? Kasi uh, i-prioritize po natin yung inyong mga request, no? Pero, although, yung mga request ninyo, kung meron na, meron na tayong na-discuss na mga topics noon, so, possibly hindi na. Kasi ang priority din natin na topic, yung mga wala pa, yung mga hindi pa na-discuss. No? Kaya kung may mga request kayo dun sa mga topics na hindi pa natin na-discuss, just write in the comment uh, portion po ng YouTube channel natin para bigyan po natin ng priority yung mga requested po ninyo na topics. No? Kasi, ang priority po na nililiscuss natin, yung mga wala pa tayong discussions at saka yung pangalawa, yung mga updates. Kagaya dito sa battery fund na to, this is new, no? Kasi pag umpisa na nag-train law, ngayon lang to lumabas, no? Train law is uh, 2018, no? 18, 19, 20, 21, no? Magpo four years na yun, three years na yung ating, ano, magpo four years na yung ating train law. Ngayon pa lang lumabas yung... Uh, ano niya, procedure for the battery fund. Kaya, binigyan natin ng priority for discussion. No? Okay, so, wala na? Okay, so with that, I would like to say thank you very much. At saka sa mga subscribers po natin, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, malapit-lapit na tayo sa 10,000 subscribers. No? Para sa amin kasi, achieve, that is an achievement. And thank you very much po sa YouTube. Uh, Good evening, everyone.